You join us shortly after the start. Um, unfortunately, didn't get the start. It was kind of busy. Um, but uh, but yeah, here we go. Uh, I am a little bit ahead of Don, who's there. We got uh, Jim, who's over there, and we've got uh, Mikhail and Etienne. I have decided to go between these islands here. Um, I'm going to the to the east of Fuerteventura. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Maybe this is a mistake. Buddy McIntyre's overtaken me already. Um, don't really know what I'm doing wrong. But Etienne and Michel uh, over there somewhere. They have literally gone 45 degrees, maybe 90 degrees, different direction from us. Dinner time on the good ship Origami. We're still going down the coast of Fuerteventura. Still got Don over there somewhere, sun's going down. Got a cup of tea. Got my meal here that's just hydrating. Got Pip steering us along. Life is good. <laughs> I'm starting the voyage across the Atlantic in a boat I built myself that's 19 foot long. So it's uh, about one, maybe two in the morning uh, on the second day of uh, the Transac. Uh, wind is all over the place. I'm trying to, trying to keep the course going roughly where I want to go. But we've gone from wind, following wind, to now running relatively close hauled, not super close hauled. I've still got the A5 up. Um, but while I was reefing just before dark, uh, one of the jammers fell apart. I don't know whether you can see that, but I just thought I might fix it while, I've, while I'm awake and in the cockpit and messing around with the sails. Morning! It's the end of the first night and it's been really pleasant. Um, had the A5 up all night uh, and the mainsail. Really comfortable motion, the sea's really flat. Um, yeah, managed to get some sleep. Uh, a few ships out to dodge, so I have spent some time awake in the middle of the night. Yeah, other excitements in the night. I was just uh, I was just sitting here um, uh, at about three in the morning and I felt something land on my shoulder and I thought it was just a bit of spray. Turned out it was a flying fish that had climbed into the boat and just flown in. Hey. On Thursday, the 18th of November, 2021. Just been looking at the charge rates on the uh, uh, on the battery, and I thought it doesn't look very high, considering I had the two solar panels and we've got bright sunlight, and we're slopping around because there's literally no wind at all. We're in 0.5 knots. Anyway, so uh, I had a look at the solar panels, and sure enough, the one on the starboard side wasn't doing anything at all. Uh, and when I took it apart, um, so I've had to take it off the the boat. I've actually brought it inside now. You can see there's a burnt bit just here. So there's been been a bit of a problem uh, with this connection. So what I've just done is I've dug it out. I've separated this from the solar panel and uncovered both of the contacts. Um, I think there was probably some kind of moisture or some kind of something in there that was causing sparks and smoke. Actually, it was a yeah pretty pretty poor connection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure these are these are going to get a good connection. I'm going to put a bit of Sikaflex in there and then I'm going to clamp it up. Hopefully the Sikaflex will cure fairly quickly in this temperature and then um, test it again. And then hopefully, if that's all good, put it back on. So it's been a really slow day. This is what I can see. Silence. Sun. Almost no waves, just ripples and some swell. Oh, I can feel a bit of breeze all of a sudden. Let's have a look. How fast are we going now? 1.2 knots. Oh, ripping along. I 
can see what people mean when they say that no wind plays on your nerves. They're much worse than too much wind. I'm having an evening mug of tea. Got the outboard on to make up a little bit of mileage, just, you know, a few miles. Make me feel like I'm getting somewhere. And I'm watching the sun go down. And I tell you what, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> morning! Morning of day three, I think. Beautiful morning. Got the sun coming out over there. Trying to catch some of the sun with my solar panels. Um, just heard Don on the radio. Uh, just we try and have a little chat um, between the Glow 580 fleet at eight in the morning, eight in the evening. Um, I could receive his initial transmission. Couldn't then get anything else, uh, which is a shame. Uh, so he could clearly hear me. But, uh, I don't know whether we're just a bit too far apart today. Um, maybe I would guess maybe more than ten miles, uh, or maybe just yeah. It depends a bit. The mast is eight meters high, so that gives quite a big horizon. Maybe a little bit less than 10 miles, but it's, we are travelling in a similar direction. Um, so I was uh, I was wondering last night what to do. <coughs> so, so that's us there, and then we've left the Canaries here. And this red line was the line I was originally going to take. So it was down here, actually goes quite close to the Cape Verdes, and then we hit the trades and we power along that way. Um, when I looked at the chart, um, the this is what they call the middle route. This black one uh, goes across somewhere near these sea mounts here, and then across there, and you save yourself a lot of miles. But because there is a weird area of variability in the wind, pretty much in this whole block of uh, this triangle that's created by those two routes, the southern one and the middle one, uh, I really don't know what the best plan is. I think I'm going to try and get some west in. And basically just try and cut this corner. I'm going to head for the Tropic Seamount, which is this one here. Because um, the trade winds seem to be forming much further south than traditionally. Um, the week before we left, they were blowing consistently down here and just across. And routing would have been dead easy. At the moment, we've got a weak, uh, a weak area here. And it's going to survive probably for the next five days. I've just been sent the positions by Lutz, the race director. Um, so we all get these. So what we have down here, we have this one is uh, Mikhail, this one is Etienne, this one is Don, that's me, and Jim is here. About to go down below to uh, do the washing up, as it were, or at least just clear up the galley after dinner. I just noticed the moon rising. Look at that. That's not a sight you see every day, is it? A big red moon climbing out of the sea. Morning of day four, I think. Um, and the wind has come back a little bit, not much. Um, it's just picking up a bit. We've been doing two and a half, three knots for the last two hours or so, uh, three hours maybe. And woke up to find a pod of dolphins with me, which is pretty cool. There must be quite a few of them, maybe ten, maybe more. Um, so that was a nice surprise. A lovely way to wake up. The sun coming up over there, and we got the moon going down over there. Really stamping along now, so I've managed to get the A3 up, which is uh, about bloody time. Really, still not very good at hoisting it. Managed to balls it up the first time. Uh, this time, though, I think I've got a plan and I've got a system. Um, so yeah, this this thing, which always seems to defeat me the first time, I think I will be able to conquer it. Maybe by the end of 30 days of sailing. You never know, I might actually be able to do it myself. Uh, the wind vane has been a bit wayward on this course, so pips all over the place, and I, it's basically because 
as we accelerate down a wave, I think she loses a bit of grip on the air going over the vein, and and then we potentially we don't broach just yet, but um, but yeah, it gets pretty exciting, and then the the, the spinnaker then fills, or rather, Jenica fills, and then pulls the bow back round, then, and then it's if you get into a kind of swing, kind of left and right and left and right, and then it can get worse and worse, and then then it needs a little bit of help. So I'm just about to put an audio book on. Um, put some sun cream on, sit out here for a few hours, uh, just hand steering. This would be what some idiot on the south coast of the UK would describe as champagne sailing conditions. It really does feel like we're getting somewhere now. So I've got the A3 up, full mainsail, wind vane just about coping with this combination uh, what speed are we doing i want a bearing of 240 five and a half six six and a half seven in other news the uh, the solar panel that's been fixed is doing a great job i think we're now back in business with both so we're charging now at 5.4 amps uh, the batteries were down really low uh, this morning actually, 12.1 volts, we're now at 13.1. Still got another 20% to go to get them fully charged, but I'm going to make the most of that now. I've got various little devices that I'd like to charge up, including this camera. Um, but uh, for now I'm just going to let all the power go straight into the batteries. Just been messing with the tiller pilot. Um, I think I'm getting the hang of it. So, uh, let's see, I've got the instruction manual. Um, so it's got a, uh, a gain control and it's got a dead band uh, and I think when I tried to use it earlier today uh, with the Jenica up um, it was just too slow to respond and I think I'd accidentally sent it with the dead band on so the dead band is a is a point at which it just doesn't try and respond um, until a certain number of degrees has passed uh, and then it then inputs the, the change at that point and so I think it was a bit late basically in making changes going downwind with the Jenica needs to be fairly rapid response um, because there is a kind of sweet spot where it's not being blanketed by the main and it's not being brought too far into the wind and the luff curls. So, um, so yeah, I think I'm getting there. Learning as we go every day. After an all right night, which was not fast, but I had the, the mainsail up and I pulled the jib out and I was going pretty much down the track that I wanted to. Um, boat was sailing itself under the wind vane really well. Um, doing somewhere between three and four knots. So given that there wasn't a huge amount of wind, that was quite good. Um, and then this morning, purgatory, look at it. Nothing, no wind anymore at all. Now we're talking. It has been like this literally all day. Some wind. <clears throat> the merest breath of some wind. Coming from exactly the opposite direction from when it was uh, when we stopped in this particular part of the sea. Just to get the A5 drawing, it's got a nice tight luff. I don't think I can get the A3 to go on this point of sail. It's actually almost close hauled. Um, but look at that, we're doing two knots. Two knots! At least two knots faster than we've been going for the last 12 hours. So. Lunchtime, day five. Uh, last night was slow, to say the least. Um, not a huge amount to report apart from a whale in the middle of the night, um, a squall, uh, which turned out to be not very strong at all, uh, and a ship that was on a direct collision course with me. Um, and I chatted to the, the officer on watch and he said he could see me and he passed to one side of me, but it still feels close. <laughs> like, even though he was a quarter of a mile away, it still feels close. Um, uh, there's something about the dark. Uh, and seeing the lights coming towards you when you can see port and starboard uh, lights coming towards you you know you need to do something about it uh. and this morning i was taking a crap in the cockpit in the bucket and just looking out over the side of the boat and a whale surfaced 
not far from me, which was pretty exciting. I don't think that's ever going to happen again. Um, don't think I'll ever be taking a dump and watching the wildlife in the whales. Not being an expert, far from an expert on this, I could well be wrong. But as far as I could see, it had a kind of rounded head. A little bit like a minke whale. Um, and it had a dorsal fin that was very far back along its body, maybe two thirds of the way back. So that's why I'm thinking whale. Um, could be completely wrong though. Either way, there was some kind of creature uh, that was uh, watching me take a poo. Trying to decide how far south to go before turning west. And given that I don't have any up-to-date forecasts uh, in terms of grims or anything like that, um, so the last one that I got was as I left Lanzarote, um, or at least got out of the um, GSM signal there. Um, so it's already, what, five days out of date. Um, and it showed a lot of variable winds, uh, kind of between the Cape Verde Islands and uh, the Canary Islands. So if I show you what the, the situation is, so we've got Canary Islands here, we've got the Cape Verdes here, and we've got Antigua over here. Now the thing to remember about this chart is that it's a conical projection, so all of these lines are tapering towards the top, obviously, um, and so it's not quite such an a tight angle as it looks. There was this area of variability just here, um, but given that my grid forecast only goes out 10 days and it gets less and less accurate the, the further it looks out, it's really difficult to tell what's going on here. There's a low somewhere here that's actually kind of butting up against the, the Azores high. Um, so it's making this do some funny stuff down here, but it's taken us so long to get down here. So we're here at the moment. It's taken us this long, so what's that, five days to get here? Um, so it's probably going to be I know, at least another five to here, um, if not if not more. Um, but my original plan was to follow a route which is approximately, it's a little bit further south than the one that you see here, which is the southern route that's marked on here. So it was to come down here, stay to this side on the Mauritanian coast, um, because that had some more consistent winds, and then move across and then come across to this uh, this kind of latitude here. Um, I've put that in the chart plotter, um, and actually it now looks like I'm going too far south. So having looked at Jimmy Cornell's book and having advocated that you need to go quite far south, you read the text and it actually says that the traditional one of the traditional ways was to go uh, about 250 nautical miles northwest of the Cape Verde Islands, which puts you about here. Um, it's still quite a long way south of what's called the southern route. Um, and then if you read further, um, it says that you should be crossing, uh, I forget exactly which one, one of these lines of latitude at, it's quite a long way this way. So actually he is advocating in the text with modern um, weather routing, you should be going actually further west initially. And then he says drop down below the, um, the latitude of Antigua and then north, which actually makes a lot of sense. If this north equatorial current at 0 0.5 to 1.5 knots exists, that's a significant win. Um, so that adds, you know, up to, what's that, 30 something, 36 miles a day uh, extra, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not entirely sure how far that extends either side. Um, I mean, I can't imagine it. It, it is generated by this lighthouse here, as it appears on this chart. I don't really know whether this is gonna come out. Um, I don't know whether the GoPro can handle the dark, but this is a pretty amazing night. <laughs> After a night of sitting still with the sea as flat as a mirror, um, tonight we are just cruising. Maybe not pushing hard enough, but I'm doing somewhere between four and a half and five knots. I got the A5 full mainsail up. Really nice point of sail. We got Pip the wind vane, she's steering us through the night. And there are so many stars this evening, so many. Compared to last night, which was a bit murky, couldn't see anything. This is magical. It is incredible. I can see the Milky Way. I can see at least one or two planets. 
got this slight different colour. <laughs> it's, it's difficult not to grin and chuckle. It really is. Well, it's four in the morning and I woke up just now um, to find the boat basically hove to. Um, I went to sleep, whew, I don't know, half eleven maybe? Um, if not earlier. Uh, having set an alarm or so I thought, um, and that wasn't the brightest thing in the world. Uh, I think I must have just either slept through it, which I can't believe, or I must have just not set one. Uh, so the bait's, boat's basically just been hove to, the wind's shifted, the boat's just been hove to for the last four or five hours. This is about where I went to sleep, and this is about where I woke up, four hours. We were hove to, basically, because um, I, when I got up, uh, the, the main was backed and we were just slopped in sideways. I'd left the, um, the tiller pilot on, steering us down the, down the course, but it couldn't cope with that, so it was hard over, and the main was trying to drive us into the wind. So, I mean, that was the result of a massive wind shift. Um, so now, this morning, we're off down here. Yeah, woken up to beautiful sunshine, had some breakfast. I heard somebody speaking to Trekker. I heard a boat called Ithaca speaking to Trekker on the VHF. Relayed a message via Ithaca to Trekker. I think Trekker must be quite a long way east of me. Um, I could see Ithaca on the VHF, uh, on, sorry, on the AIS. Um, and they are a long way away, like 40 miles. Just been looking at the chart, um, and the chart plotter, and I think this is the most consistent wind we've had for the last week, basically. So this is our sixth day at sea. Um, and I think this wind has been with us now for 18 hours, maybe? Um, yeah, something like that. Maybe, maybe not quite that much, maybe 12. Um, either way, it's better than it has been for a long time. I'm probably just about to jinx us, but we are sailing down a bearing which would take us straight to the Cape Verdes. And I've got the A5 up, full main. Could do with a touch more wind, but we're going somewhere between three and five knots, depending on the lulls um, and all that stuff. Um, so I cannot complain. Um, it does seem an awfully long way to Antigua when you look at the chart. <laughs> so it's just about to be nightfall and the wind's do dropped quite a bit. It's just, this is the kind of decision that I'm really terrible at. So. I've got the A3 up, I've got a full main up, and the wind is dying. You can see that it's just slatting and banging. The, I've had to just alter course to try and keep the A3 filled. And every now and again the wave just completely kills it. Um, I don't want to put too much wear on the A3. Um, so it's probably best not to just leave it up and slatting backwards and forwards. Not much I can do about the mains, um, apart from maybe tighten up the outlaw a little bit. But it's these. This is the kind of thing where do I just bring that one down, put up the A5. The A5 I can control. I know I can control it in a squall, so I can just roll it up, which is really handy. But then it's a smaller sail. Uh, it gets blanketed by the main uh, more, so I have to sail a, a course that's closer to the wind to fill it properly. And that is almost due south. In fact, I'm doing 190, somewhere between 180 and 190 now. Um, so, I mean, yes, it's useful going south, but oh, it just completely dies this motion at the moment because we've got a bit of swell that's being kicked up by the wind today. And the wind's died, it's just, yeah, it's pretty unpleasant. Um, so yeah, I'm just about to drink my cup of tea. I'm gonna eat my dinner that's down there, just uh, rehydrating. And I'm gonna have a think about it. So I've eaten dinner, I've had a cup of tea, and I still can't decide what to do. So I've just heard an almighty bang, and... Oh, where's he gone? And there was a bird sitting on the deck. 
Ah, oh, I think the bird must have flown into the sail and ended up landing on the deck just here. Where's he gone? Oh, he must have flown off. Second go at making a coffee. It is three in the morning and uh, just had to jibe because there was a tanker coming and yeah, that was annoying. I uh, kicked over my coffee during the manoeuvre, which is really annoying. Morning. I think it's day seven because I've just got through my last breakfast in my first breakfast pack. So I've done them in weeks. Um, so I've just had golden syrup porridge with some raisins in it, which is an awesome way to start the day, especially when you've got a sunset, sunset, sunrise like this. Got a cup of coffee, all is good. To be a good reason to learn some astro nav. I could let the sun come up a little bit higher on that side, take a shot, and I could also shoot the moon. It's just up there. I don't know whether that gives you some kind of instant fix. It might do. That'll be good. Uh, shame I don't know how to do either very well. I can see a sailing boat for the first time since I left, pretty much. Pretty random. I can see over there, you probably won't be able to make it out, there is a sail. The other side of these waves, there it is. I think it's a big catamaran. Looks like a lagoon or something like that. One of these catamarans with like a conservatory on top. What do we have for dinner tonight? What's in here? Beef stew and pearl barley. Now we're talking. Tell you what, it's it's good to be moving, uh, uh, rather than just being become. But to be honest, I am missing the stillness a little bit. I mean, just doing stuff is is quite difficult. Um, maybe I should buy a catamaran. Dolphins as the sun sets. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I think they do it just because they can. I think that's the most awesome thing about it. They don't need reason. This is a big pot of dolphins. It really is huge. I think I count. I don't, you don't really count, but you get a feeling, don't you? Maybe there's maybe 20? I don't know if that's feasible. They just seem to be hanging around. They just seem to be loving it this evening. There's a few, there's a few over there. There's the ones under here. Oh, it's amazing. Pretty sure I've just got this 100% wrong. I think I've sailed into an area of no wind. We are not alone. It's the middle of the night. Um, I just switched on the AIS to get a, a good idea of what's around us. And we've got this lot. Um, that's the boat that I contacted earlier. Um, this one, these are all sailing yachts, and they're all, I think, on the way to the Caribbean. So there's these guys, there's more down here, more over here, more in front of us. I mean, it's, it's busy, it's busy, and on the way to Antigua, that's for sure. Trekker, 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 origami, origami, origami. Yeah, Origami Trekker, 72. Yep, go 72. Origami, Origami Trekker, 
Track it, Aragon, go ahead. Trekker, Origami, you're really broken, almost unreadable, though. Roger that. Um, all's well, all's well. I kept the breeze all night, kept the breeze all night, making good time, over. It's day eight, I think. Uh, good breeze today, good breeze. So we're doing somewhere between five and seven knots. Um, and we're on a, a kind of just a reach at the moment. Uh, we got two reefs in the main, and we got the uh, A5 out. Um, I need two reefs in the main because the boat just keeps rounding up. Otherwise, uh, the wind vane is steering. I spent quite a while tweaking it, so that weight is now in exactly the right place, I think, to keep us going in a straight line, but also to retain a bit of uh, control. Because uh, if it's too low down, then you lose all of the. Whoop, you lose all of the uh, the reaction uh, in the steering. Uh, so that one, for example, could have done with a bit more of an earlier reaction, so the weight would have to be higher. But if I do that, then we weave about all over the place, so we react to every tiny change uh, in the wind over the vane. Uh, otherwise, things are looking good. We've got three or four amps of charge going on. We're almost completely full for the first time since leaving uh, the Canary Islands, um, which is cool so I can charge everything else up. It's also really hot. <laughs> so I finally uh, put away the first t-shirt that I was wearing, I changed yesterday. Um, so that's had a full week's wear. It's pretty greasy now. Uh, I've gone on to my next one, Eat Sleep Sail, which is not actually that, uh, that far wrong from what I'm currently doing. Just got a, a weather update from Race Control saying that uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow lunchtime, uh, there's going to be strong winds forecasts, northeasterlies uh, for this area. Um, so I think it's 25 knots. Um, uh, and then the following day, it's um, four six gusting eight potentially. We've also just had a uh, position update. So that's where I was at 12 o'clock, obviously. That's where Don is. Uh, so he's about. 50 miles behind me and then if we go down here this is where the other guys are so we've got Etienne and we've got Mikhail they're getting very close to the, the Cape Verde Islands um, I'm still planning on going down this course that you see here because it's a northeasterly wind and this here is around about the latitude of Antigua um, Cornell reckons you can strike out west at that point but actually if there's no decent trade winds at that point I can go further south and cut this corner off um, so we'll see what happens here um, Jim is is uh, quite a bit up here I think um, so uh, so yeah he's chasing us down as well Morning! It's day 10 and we've just had a really, really good 24 hours. Um, so, as you can see, the sun's just, just rising over there. My cup of coffee here. Life is good because since 10.30 yesterday morning, um, it's now 8 o'clock, uh, but since 10.30 yesterday morning, um, we've done 110 or 12 miles. Um, so that's a pretty good average for a 19 foot boat. Um, so we've still got uh, an hour and a half, uh, two and a half hours rather to run, uh, and then I'll take another fix and then we'll work out what the distance is. Uh, I'm fairly certain that'll be our longest 24 hour run, uh, something like a, I don't know, 120 maybe, uh, which would be really cool. Um, I'm 90% certain I've found some trade wind, which is really cool. Got some nice little fluffy bits of cumulus over there. We're headed down towards those a little bit. Um, nice consistent breeze. 
Uh, the swell isn't too bad. We're rocking and rolling a little bit, but we do have the hold out jib to try and, uh, try and smooth the motion out a little bit. Um, but yeah, life is good. Well, that was a long night. Um, so this is the beginning of some bad weather. Um, I think we've got this until midday. So it was uh, started last night. Um, and it's not so much the wind, which is pretty strong. I think it's it's not mega strong, but for such a small boat, um, I think it's meant to be four, six, um, gusting seven. And then at midday today, it should be four, six, gusting eight, which is a bit weird. I just uh, calculated how many miles I've done since yesterday, this time yesterday, 10.30, so that's where I am there at 10.30 yesterday. I'm all the way over here, that blue line is my track, there I am. And uh, yeah, so 120 nautical miles travelled in 24 hours, which is pretty respectable I think, uh, given that, what's that, maybe half of it was in these conditions, so... Still got some pretty big waves, uh, pretty confused sea, really the beginning of yesterday uh, was fantastic um, in terms of being able to really make up some distance but these seas are well frankly too risky for me to uh, to really start oh, right in there. That's what happens uh, if you're not careful. Oh, hello. Come on, Origami, come round. There we go. Uh, that was good timing, wasn't it? So the wave state has got bad enough that actually I've started trailing a wall. Um, I will show you it once I can sit here. I keep the hatch shut because I just took quite a big wave into the cockpit. Uh, I don't know whether it's visible. Yeah, you can just about see it in the weight there. So I've got a bridle, one from each stern cleat, which are through 18 mils worth of ply, and then they've got a backing plate as well, so they're pretty strong. Uh, that's 55 meters of line with uh, a length of chain on the end as a weight, uh, and it's providing quite a lot of force. Uh, so as I was lowering it into the water, uh, and releasing it, streaming it. I had to put it around a winch uh, while I let it out uh, just because it started to get pretty difficult to, to hold on to. Uh, it's not really appreciably slowed us down a huge amount. It's slowed us down a touch. Uh, we're not reaching quite such high speeds, but the, the main thing is actually it's keeping the stern onto the waves, which is actually really good. Just spent, uh, <coughs> must have been, yeah, it was an hour trying to make the boat go faster, trying to make it go in a straight line. I can't do it. So all I've got is full jib now as opposed to reef jib. Still got the, the water out of the back. And even now the jib's not filling properly. And the warp's making the wind vane do funny stuff. I tried tilting the wind vane and then the wind vane was stuck and then various other things. I put part of the main up. Etienne had a suggestion like a kind of fourth reef in the main just like just have a little corner of it up tried that didn't work just backed immediately couldn't get it back over again so put, pulled that down oh just uh just really freaking frustrating it's almost impossible to keep it going straight down a wave even if i hand steer it um i can't actually keep it going straight i think then there's either the weight distribution's wrong or I, I don't know what the hell i've done but something can't be right unless this is just a really unstable boat um, but yeah, frustrated is not the word, just, I mean at least it's not raining, that is the only thing going for it out there, that is literally the only thing that's good. Oh, time for a cup of tea. Yeah, and what's worse, um, I forgot to say in the last one, is that um, this weather's meant to continue for the next three days. I think tonight it's just going to be a case of making sure I'm strapped in 
um, seeing how it goes. So far, so good. But uh, these waves are coming out of nowhere. Occasionally, you just get thrown against the leak off. The noise is something else as well when there's a wave coming. I've lost track of which day it is. It's uh, the 29th. Um, I think it's what, the 10th or 11th day? 10th, maybe. Um, Maybe that's the 12th. Anyway, um, so yeah, last night was fun. Um, pretty windy still, um, but I tried a different sail plan. Uh, Etienne suggested um, having a bit more sail up uh, might help. So uh, I messed around with a trailing of warp and having a small, you know, having the reef jib and stuff yesterday. And if anything, the, the motion was worse. And so I put the full jib up. Uh, I could not get, Etienne's suggestion was to have um, like a little bit, like a, almost like a fourth reef in the main, just like a, just have a little scrap of it up. Couldn't seem to get that to work. So I just went with the jib. And actually last night was all right. You know, we wiped out a couple of times, slid sideways and things like that. But actually it was pretty, pretty comfortable. Uh, I think we've done, we're probably heading for at least 110 miles in 24 hours, 10.30. Uh, so uh, so that'll be good. But the, the conditions are still pretty rough. You know, the confused seas is the worst thing. Um, so we're now heading due west. Uh, these w waves, the wind is probably east-northeast, uh, but some of these waves are traveling northeast uh, to southwest, uh, and some of them even go uh, even more northerly than that. So occasionally we just, there's a, a wave that's just traveling in a completely different direction. Uh, but at the moment, it's actually a really nice smooth ride. We've got just enough power to keep us moving. Uh, we accelerate from kind of uh, four knots in the bottom of a trough, four point, let's see, 4.5, and then as we go down, we go up to six. Um, so I'm intrigued to know what our average is gonna be, but we've still got these breaking crests, which every now and again, they catch us out. Um, uh, and uh, and we kind of you know we, we have a bit of a wipeout, but the boat just seems to get back on its feet without trying too much. Um, we had some pretty major ones last night. The uh, the horseshoe life ring uh, actually almost fell off. Uh, the uh, the light on the life ring had fallen off and is filled with water because it was being towed along behind the boat. It must be the the worst the worst uh, floating light you can buy uh, predictably it's not actually waterproof for a waterproof light that's pretty poor um, don't buy a La Lizas um, floating uh, horseshoe light they're terrible oh, so what's missing from that view there yep the left hand solar panel uh, was torn off its mountings by wave so I think we must have shipped, I was lying on the bunk down here, I think we must have probably caught it in the water. So we were healing over a long way um, and I think it must have just snapped off. Well, I've got the, I've got the solar panel in there, so I've managed to save it. Um, and I've, it's sheared off the glass fibre tube that holds it on. Uh, I managed to undo all of the electrical connections and bring it back on board. So. Hopefully it still works. Um, I can always just, when the weather is better, uh, attach it to a guardrail or something um, and, uh, and get some charge out of it. Well, welcome to the washing machine. Um, this is probably one of the wildest nights so far. Um, I don't know what force the wind is outside, but it is pretty strong. We are under just a reefed jib at the moment. Um, and we're doing between four and six knots, probably. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, another morning um, after a pretty rough night. Um, just uh, got these squall clouds following us all day so we have a little bit of a lull like this and then it all goes mental for about 20 minutes and then it all calms down again wasn't expecting this it's pretty wet just got a weather update from race control um, 
which is unfortunate. <laughs> As uh, originally their update was suggesting that the weather might abate a little bit tomorrow, uh, maybe the day after. Now it looks like it's going to be in three days time, I think it is, um, that it might abate slightly, uh, but the wave state stays as it is. Uh, so the wave state stays at three to four meters. Um, yeah, it's really early morning uh 3:46 on the 1st of december i think it is um and it's pretty wild night not so much the wind which is pretty wild but we're down to storm jib only running running with it um but it's the waves so i think we're getting probably every breaking crest now uh, and it's coming pretty much from due aft. Occasionally we get a set of waves that are coming from the kind of north east, so they just smack into the side of the boat and just knock us over. So we got some going sideways, we got some following us. Um, but yeah, because the boat's so light, we just hit the tops of these ones. And uh, we just ping off, really. Oh, this one's going to be wet. We do occasionally hit seven knots. Um, and then in the troughs, we're in the threes. So I'm hoping we average kind of five would be nice. Um, I think we still will have done over 100 nautical miles in 24 hours, 10.30. So that's good. Okay, so after an hour and a half of messing about, Getting some good charge, 2.3, probably getting up to 2.6 maybe. Um, so, took a while. Tried to uh, fill in about with a number of things, but I've ended up with this setup. So this panel appears to still work, which is good. Uh, I've just tied it to the rail, uh, bungeed it on at the bottom there. So if a wave does hit it, maybe it'll move out of the way. I've then run the wires. Actually, I tried to run them through that cable gland thing over there, but it's just too rough. Uh, and it's very difficult to get a wire through that gap at the moment um, so I might be doing it later but I've just jammed it underneath the, um, the locker lid I think it'll be watertight enough it's not great but it's better than nothing but yeah so that's all good now I just need to change this contact lens and then we're set up for the day um, I can't remember when did I change this contact lens I think it was about midnight no maybe 10 yeah it was about 10 p.m. last night so actually yeah, it's due for a change, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Um, so, I can swap eyes to the other eye. I tell you what though, outside it's so bright that actually it's really difficult to see anything when one eye is blurry and one eye is clear. Because the blurry eye just creates a huge amount of noise and halos and stuff. And I have to just shut one eye and, and work with just one eye, which is a bit awkward. Um, oh really could do with this wind and the wave state just abating just a bit. I don't know whether you can make out those waves over there. There's a few that are travelling that way. And we've got ones behind us travelling this way. And this is the, the weird double wave pattern that's really beginning to piss me off. Because <laughs> um, they ramp up into these little pyramids. And if we're right underneath one and we drive up the pyramids, they actually, yeah, oh, you see, there's one going sideways that way, he's off over there, and yet we've got this one coming down here. Um, so yeah, it's just, you see that, I don't know whether you can make out the ones that are very far back from us, where you get this kind of sploosh and a peak of wave, um, that's two of these waves hitting each other. Morning, morning, it's morning of day 15, maybe. Um, yeah, pretty easy night last night. Uh, we made a lot of south in the course. Um, so we came down here, um, pretty good, really. There's a bit of a wibbly bit just here where uh, a lot of random little squalls came through. I had to mess around a bit. Um, here's one coming right behind me. Um, we'll see what this looks like when it gets here. 
Just been hammering along nicely with the uh, full jib pulled out and then uh, with the uh, three reefs in the main. And this guy is coming up behind us and I have absolutely no idea what's in it. Turns out this is what was inside that squall, that cloud. Just a crap ton of rain and pretty windy as well. Don't actually have any sails up, we're doing five knots. I was looking at the, the, the I think it was the Cornell book or I think it was the Cornell book, basically saying that squalls shouldn't happen in the kind of second half of the Atlantic. Um, but we are now in that part, I guess, almost. Um, we've had more squalls in the last few days than we have had in the rest of the time <laughs> going across. So I don't know quite where he gets that little factoid from. All right, I've forgotten which day it is. I'm not even going to try. Um, really frustrating night last night. I could not seem to get the boat to go where I wanted it to go at the right speed. In the end, I settled for, I can't remember what it was now. I think it was oh, horrendously slow. It was like three and a half knots or something. And we were going the right direction, but I don't know what was up with it. Um, it was just me and figuring out what, the, how, what was happening with the waves and then the wind was really up and down and all sorts. And uh, yeah, we haven't made a huge amount of distance overnight, which is not good. But this morning, managed to get the boat going again. I've got the old pulled out jib and the main. I should probably, um, well, depends. There's some quite a lot of squalls around. Not squalls, but there are these, well, they're probably squalls underneath that cloud, for example. Um, there's one, not really a squall over there, but where the wind's coming from there's not much but um but yeah the wind is is quite variable today uh the wave state is better than it has been they're not breaking as much um but they are still pretty big and we're getting these really weird ones still coming sideways um which is annoying um but manageable hello so it's the end of Day 17, well it's not the end of it, it's uh, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. On, on the 17th day, so it's the 4th of December. Um, had a really flipping terrible 24 hours, if I'm honest. Um, I hate squalls, I hate squalls with a passion, I hate squalls at night, um, when I can't see what the hell's going on. Uh, and last night was three squalls in a row, uh, so I spent most of the evening just sitting out on the deck, I put some music on and just lying there uh, till about 11 maybe uh, maybe 12 a bit later came down below thought everything was fine um, I had the pulled out jib uh, and the main really reefed down and then within about half an hour massive squall stuff all over the place um, just yeah horrible uh, then tried to get the boat going again could not really work out what the hell was going on uh, then got hit by another one uh, and then uh, finally got the boat going really well and then just got hit by another one uh, got the position updates uh, yesterday um, so from the race control Don's overtaking me which is annoying um, I mean he's got a lot more experience than me so it's not that surprising uh, Etienne and Misha, miles ahead, just, I don't know how many, they're, they're averaging like 5.6 knots, that's an average, I average like 4. I don't know, 8 or something, so they're just so quick, um, so I think those guys are genuinely looking at 10 days to arrive in Antigua, uh, I'm probably looking at 12, um, but I figure, you know, if I'm within a day of Don, and I'm within two days of those guys, after 30 days of sailing, that's not too bad, actually, I'll take that, 8% or whatever it is. Uh, slower, you know, this is my first first ocean crossing, first significant amount of solo sailing. Um, this is, I've only done 80 hours in this boat before leaving Portugal, so, you know, those guys have already done a 900 mile passage. Uh, and they've also had months in Les Sables de Lone as well to, to put stuff together because they got their master, well, they got their master rig maybe six, eight weeks before me. Um, so they've had a lot longer. So I don't think that's too terrible. Um, if I can get to Antigua in one piece, I'll be very happy. Today is the 5th. Good night last night. Uh, made a lot of progress. Uh, only reefed down a little bit because there was a squall uh, at about, when was it? Maybe 3 in the morning. Um, so I just, uh, instead of having the full jib, I just made it into the reef jib 
we were still doing reasonable speed, not super fast. Um, but that went all right. And then this morning, um, feeling very rested actually, had a lot of sleep, um, recovered a bit from yesterday's slightly irritating experience. Um, but yeah, this morning uh, I can just feel some rain falling. So yeah, the blue water cruising thing is a lie still. Uh, so it is definitely raining. It's nice and warm. Um, and could really do with some sun to charge up the batteries. So I wanted to talk a little bit about calibration of yourself. Uh, I kind of wanted this to be a bit like one of Pip Hair's talks, which just come across all natural, but it's not going to be like that. Um, so, um, so yeah, when I first started across the Atlantic, which was about 20 days ago, um, I hadn't really sailed this boat very much. Um, well, 20 days ago was Lanzarote. Uh, prior to that, Lagos to Lanzarote was five days. Um, but to be honest, that five days was spent mainly just trying to fix stuff and uh, just trying to trying to learn all the ropes, <laughs> literally learn the ropes of the boat, what they did. Uh, so let's concentrate on Lanzarote to, to here, which is a little bit past halfway. Um, uh, hopefully a bit more than a little bit past halfway now. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so when I, when I left Lanzarote, I thought, if I can keep the boat doing four knots, great. Uh, and actually that worked pretty well. I had a number of days when I was completely becalmed, which was frustrating, but four knots was a good target. And then we went through a patch of bad weather, um, force six, gusting force eight, um, and some pretty massive waves about, well, I was looking at the log actually, it feels like it was yesterday, but it was about five or six days ago. Um, just as we hit the trades, um, it started getting really windy. And so at that point, um, the speeds just kept creeping up a little bit, up and up and up. And then after we got the position reports from the other guys, uh, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, uh, and I can see the average speeds that um, Etienne and Misha are doing, even Don as well, um, he's traveling fast. Um, I kind of had to recalibrate myself, but somewhere when you see the, 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 the speedo, as it were, the, uh, the notometer, flicking between four, five, six, that's still not fast enough. You know, a five as an average would be great, but it's unlikely that you're going to hit five if you're seeing fours. Um, and it's it's one of those things where it's just a case of experience and doing more and more miles in the boat. And I've done two and a half thousand miles in this boat now, but they've all been during this kind of race without a test period beforehand. But now my calibration is if I'm not seeing sevens, I'm not going fast enough. So as we go down a wave, if we're surfing at seven, great, that sounds good. And then if it drops that to five, then I'm getting concerned I haven't got enough sail up. If it hits the fours, then I start actively thinking, right, let's take out reef or let's do something other than the pulled out jib, for example. Um, and it's just a case of if I'd done that 20 days ago and I'd used that calibration then, I would be in a lot better position than I am now. Um, at the moment, I think I'm going to come fourth out of five. Um, if some disaster happens to Don, then I might come third. But I mean, me and Don are close in, in distance from the finish. But I think Don's got the experience factor uh, and the ability to push a lot harder than me. Um, probably at night. Uh, I keep using keep using my eyes as, as an excuse, but it does have a little bit of an excuse. But, um, but yeah, so it's just this calibration that actually the next time I would be that much better because I'm more used to it. And it's um, yeah, it's a little frustrating that it's taken me two and a half thousand miles to find that. But at the same time, uh, it's all good. Wait the refrigerator. One dry potato inside. No lie, not even bread. Jam. Welcome to the... What time is it? Hang on. Welcome to the 6th of December. And welcome to squall number one. Uh, I've just had to take the jib down. It is freaking mental out there. Um, we had a lot of being pushed over a bit in the night. Um, so like the boat, the cockpit filled with water a couple of occasions. Uh, oh, so I could really do without this to be honest. Um, really wanted to make some progress. Uh, we've been going really well. I think we've done over 120 miles uh, and we've still got another hour and a what is it now? Uh, 45 minutes to go. Um, so we would have done a kind of record-breaking run, possibly, uh, for us. The waves are 
surprisingly big and short and steep um, and just it's just horrible um, <laughs> I was in the middle of putting my contact lenses in so I've actually got both in for once uh, but it's just crap out there yeah these waves are pretty big um, breaking and uh, just everywhere um, just literally everywhere so they're just there's no pattern to them um, I mean obviously they're going this way but oh look here comes another bit of squall I'll close the hatch again Fucking handle just fell off the damn hatch. Bollocks. Okay, so we've now got one handle. I do still have the handle here. Well, that's annoying. Because there's quite a big hole in that. <laughs> so that'll have to be fixed. Oh, yeah, great. I'll tell you what, 6th of December. Started well. Wind seems to be calming down a bit now. Uh, kind of. Uh, aye, 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 aye. Although, we don't seem to be calming down at all, really, here on Origami. Um, so, uh, yeah, just done some kind of little checks. So I've put the handle back on uh, the hatch here. I unscrewed itself. Opened up the lockers at the back there just to check there's not too much water that's got in. There's a bit in there, not too much, uh, but given how much is just flooded into the cockpit on a regular basis, when we start lying down in front of these waves, then that's not too bad. Okay, so <laughs> we're moving, uh, but it's pretty uncomfortable. So uh, we're doing pretty well in terms of the angle. Um, we're doing somewhere between, I don't know, four and seven knots or something. But the state of the sea is just absurd. Like it's, it really is unpleasant out here. Um, I've just turned the camera on because we've just got hit by a wave sideways, and then as we were kind of falling off the wave, another one broke over the top of the boat. Oh, hello! Ah, and it was just, yeah, I've never seen so much water fly over the top of this boat before. Yeah, we're making making good progress, but boy, is it uncomfortable. Um, and uh, to be honest, oh hello, oh, 12.6 knots, straight down that one, that was good. It is warm today, it is really warm. Um, going downwind, nice and fast, got no reefs in, the wind's actually dropped off a bit but the wave state is perfect. Um, just nice big rolling waves, boat's just cruising along, uh, had a combination of Hold out jib and the A5 um, to get us going. Um, hold out jib, I can use the self steering. A5, not a chance, still quite windy. As soon as we round up, uh, we just lose all traction and you need to concentrate all the time. So, so yeah, that's the advantage of the um, using the pull out jib. All good today, just feels like we're going downhill. Like it doesn't seem to be taking any effort at all, and we're cruising along. You can see that. Pip is really not having to do a huge amount of input um, downwind. It's a nice balanced sail plan. Uh, well, it's balanced-ish um, with this big mainsail. It, it's not perfect, but um, but yeah, you can see that the wake is basically straight, and we are still on course. So yeah, it's pretty good. Warm nuts and an orange juice in the bar and grill. Don't mind if I do. Look at those. Oh. I spotted these two little guys earlier. I have a feeling I might have some goose barnacles attached to my boat. It's the morning of the 9th and a bit of an admission about last night. So uh, I was pretty tired. Um, oh, hello, there's a porpoise. Or a dolphin, somewhere over there. I've just seen him come up. Anyway, um, uh, so I was pretty tired. Uh, I had the boat um, goose wings with the pulled out jib and the main, and we were doing pretty well. Um, you know, kind of hitting probably an average of five, five point 
two or something. Um, and yeah, I thought we were we were all right. I put the uh, I had the tiller pilot on for quite a while, and then I thought oh, I'll put the wind vane on because the wind started to get up enough that actually it was uh, probably better to do that. Um, and then uh, yeah, then I put my head down, <laughs> and I woke up at eight this morning. So I think I might have had eight hours sleep, uninterrupted, absolutely nothing. Didn't have an alarm set. Didn't I, just, I literally just put my head down on the on the bed, thinking I'll just uh, you know I'll just rest my neck for a little bit uh, and I've woken up this morning and I woke up to find the sails were backed and we were slopping along and I looked at the plotter and I think I went to sleep about here uh, maybe here and we just went down there and that's maybe 20 miles 20 miles and eight hours so that's pretty poor don't know whether it'll come out on the video audio I don't know if you can hear the beat of the, uh, the engines in this uh, tanker over here. So that's the Methane Mickey Parker. Uh, 300 meters long, 45 meters wide, uh, and it's about a mile away, which is deceptive, uh, at least to my untrained eyes. I would have said that was closer, but nope. That is um, over a mile away and disappearing away from us. We're doing, what, like three or four knots, and they're doing 18. It's not too shabby, this, really. I've just had to, to come down below because it's getting far too hot up there. I'm just, uh, I'm hand steering, but I, I literally can't take any more of it. I just, sitting in the sun, I've, I can see a migraine starting. It's happened yesterday. Uh, oh, geez, I'm not built for these temperatures, I don't think. I've had to take the, the A5 uh, down, uh, the small one I've had pulled out. Um, I've just pulled out the, the jib instead. Um, it looks like we've, we've lost a knot by doing that, um, but I'm going to have to have a lie down because I am feeling really quite ropey. Time for some paracetamol to kind of see whether I can get ahead of this migraine. Welcome to the 13th of December. Uh, we've got 288 nautical miles to go. Had a pretty good run yesterday. That was 125 nautical miles, but as we get closer and closer to the Caribbean, the weather gets worse. It's now raining again. Um, and the uh, during the night, we had an epic squall. Uh, I mean, really insane amounts of rain, I would say half an hour of really intense rain, like tropical rain. As per the Cornell book, squalls are generally only experienced in the first third of the Atlantic from the crossing from the Cape Verdes to Antigua. There's one, line off. There's another chasing us down over there. We're 250 miles from Antigua. It's been a non-stop procession of squalls for the last 24 hours. Uh, Jimmy, I think, the prevailing weather conditions are catching up with you. You may need to reconsider your book. Um, this cannot be unheard of. I mean, it's just, it's a pain in the ass, frankly. Welcome to the Caribbean, part 10. It's literally just, just non-stop squalls today. This must be the 10th. It's just, shit sailing it really is just i don't know whether you can see that it's just hissing down sudden increase in wind speed maybe an additional 15 knots of breeze just i mean it's grim you can barely see 100 yards yeah this is not fantastic 
conditions for anything. Uh, yeah. I'm 250 miles from the Caribbean. And it is pissing it down again. This is now the sixth, seventh squall of the afternoon. I mean, it's just horrible. About three days ago, the squall started it. It was like one a day. Now today, I'm, I'm on the, I've lost count, 15, maybe. It's just hard, hard work. Uh, it's the first couple of the day arriving. Had one at 3 a.m. again. A uh, real epic one, woke up to find rain just pouring into the cabin. Um, just absolutely chucking it down. Uh, I've spent all night under the tiller pilot, reef jib and a little scrap of main. Um, doing about four and a half knots, I think. So the daily run, 10.30 to 10.30, was something like 117 miles. Morning in the Caribbean, must be time for a rain shower. Visibility is down to about, I don't know, three or four hundred meters. The sun's trying to break through though, which is nice. Uh, batteries are completely discharged. Uh, I could really do with charging everything. Um, yeah, it's basically like a hot version of Scotland. Whatever they tell you in the blue water cruising books, it's bullshit. It's just shitty weather <laughs> running with rain just the only thing that is accurate is the fact that we've been sailing downwind that is about it everything else is a complete lie don't believe the hype hmm I wonder what's in this cloud for us I wonder it's only been 20 minutes since the last one. Here comes another one. Just for a change, in the side of the Atlantic where there aren't any squalls. Uh, we've got this one following us. Yeah! What's that, fifth of the morning? I don't know, something like that. Just when I thought we were going to make some progress, we've been hand steering for a bit. Now facing probably 25, 30 knots of wind from probably about 10, uh, occasionally gusting more than that. You can see the size of the waves that it's kicked up a really short period of time. And just, just basically just spanks the boat. And we just get fucking nowhere very, very quickly. Ah! That was I thinking we were over the freaking squalls. We had maybe two hours without them. Two hours, imagine that. Two hours to be able to leave the save sail pad up. It's like a new day today. Well, it is a new day, but it's like a new ocean. Like fluffy little clouds, a lot of sun, lovely predictable wind. I've been hand steering all morning to get some miles in and just letting the wind vane do some work while I have some food. Just took a little bit of sail down to give it a chance. It struggles a little bit when the sails aren't particularly well balanced. 28 days, I think, maybe 29, I can't remember. But land ho! Now, my friends, is Antigua. And we are heading for the finish line. We are about 10 miles away. And. <laughs> I can't quite believe I'm here, if I'm honest. Like it seems a little bit like it's not really real. Because the other reason is I put my other contact lens in. For the first time in 30 days, I've got two contact lenses in so I can actually see out of both eyes at the same time. So uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a surprising kind of level of reality to it now. Um, but yeah, these uh, just got to trundle down this, this little bit here and then uh, hang a right into English Harbour and then finish there and then I don't know actually what's happening next. I need to contact the race guys, uh, race control people to find out where we're actually going. I have a feeling it's not English Harbour but anyway we are nearly there and actually getting a little bit emotional like it's been a fair old journey to get to this point and uh, 
Yeah. What the hell? I just crossed the Atlantic. <laughs> That's pretty cool. May not have been the fastest by a long shot, but I made it. So I've just been into English Harbour, which is over there. So apparently I go around this corner here and then I'm in Falmouth Bay. And then he said, I can either anchor with the super yachts or I can go ashore. No directions as to where that might be or, or any other useful information. Just, I guess I just make it up. So I'm here. I've arrived in Antigua. I didn't video the arrival of Falmouth Bay. Just around the corner from English Harbour where I'd sailed in and sailed out. <laughs> Bit of a cluster, either way. I'm here. Uh, as usual, I think Etienne managed to uh, to make sense of everything and, uh, and gave me a call on the VHF and we sorted everything out. So it's the morning after I've arrived in Antigua um, and just waiting for the medical guy to come around and give me a perfunctory health check, which I think is just a temperature check. By the sounds of it, it just comes around and he uh, and just checks that I've not got a fever. I've completely failed to, uh, to to come to the right place the first time, so I went into English Harbour because that's where the finish was. Uh, the way that it was left when we uh, uh, when we left the briefing was that we'd finish at English Harbour and then we maybe would come around to Falmouth Bay, uh, which is where we are now. So it turns out we were meant to come to Falmouth Bay. Uh, the race director Lutz um, <laughs> basically sent me a text message. I think. Uh, like two hours before I arrived and I was busy sailing into English Harbour at that point. First of all I need to check into this country um, and that means waiting for this medical guy uh, who might be here in a couple of hours time, we'll see. But uh, I don't think they're in any particular rush here, which is a shame because I could really do with just a burger really would be good.